its modern iteration, the Mini has a model for everyone. There's the hatchback for the trendy singles and couples. There's the countryman and the clubman for cool and casual families. There's the paceman for eccentric and patient people. And then there's the JCW models for the dashing and the daring crowd. But of course, there's also the Mini Convertible, a Mini for girls. Pardon me if that sounds like a sexist remark, but just look at it. In bubblegum blue with a cookies and cream interior, it's an automotive confection if ever there was one. The drop top adds further scope for frivolity, especially when it's tucked away to let the sun shine in. And that's really what the Mini Convertible is all about. The ability to savour those balmy summer's evenings, brisk spring mornings and lazy autumn afternoons with the roof down and the slipstream teasing through the cabin. Talking of which, this third generation Mini is the biggest yet, which means the cabin should be the biggest too. But while there's a lot of accommodation up front, the rear is still very much cramped, which means there's nothing maxi about this Mini's cabin. That said, premium materials and finishes ensure a smart counterpart to the fun and funky treatment that remains part of the Mini DNA. Mini fans will recognize the large round center dial, the toggle switches and the playful ambient lighting. But there's a tactile solidity to the overall execution that makes this Mini generation the most grown up thus far. As for practicality, you'll need to look elsewhere. Rear space constraints aside, the 160 litre boot isn't exactly generous. Despite its girly personality, the convertible is still very much a mini. The combination of its bug-eyed headlights, short overhangs, clamshell bonnet, big wheels, all create an almost comic book character which is as endearing as it is appealing. As already mentioned, this is the biggest Mini yet. It's 98mm longer and 44mm wider, with the wheelbase stretched by 28mm, while the front and rear tracks are wider by 42 and 38mm respectively. At just short of 1300kg, it's not a lightweight either. The fully motorized canvas roof opens and shuts in 18 seconds at speeds of up to 30km an hour and features a two-stage operation. First, the section above the front seats slides back like a large sunroof. Next, the entire roof folds down down behind the rear seats, although it doesn't disappear completely. Driving the Mini Convertible with the top down is a blastery affair, even with the windows raised. Conversation becomes increasingly difficult as you go faster, and if you have a fancy hairdo, you better wear a scarf, a buff, or a cap. But then I suppose that's what you expect of a convertible driving experience, and if you want it to be refined and sophisticated, you just have to go at a slower pace. Frankly though, it's hard to drive slowly in the Mini, even though this example is only the modest Cooper. Its 1.5 litre three-cylinder turbo engine combines a frisky 100 kilowatt with a boisterous 220 newton meters of torque. Add a smooth, if slightly tardy, six-speed automatic gearbox with ratios spaced for zippy response, and this little rag top always feels swifter than the figures suggest. While you wouldn't buy the Mini Cooper convertible for its dynamics, the performance is still quite brisk. This auto gearbox version does the 0-100 sprint in 8.6 seconds, which is actually a tenth of a second quicker than the manual version. Top speed, a fairly academic 206 kilometers an hour. For some people, fuel consumption might be more important. This car has a claimed combined cycle fuel consumption figure in the low fives, but in reality, expect somewhere between the high sixes and the early sevens in mixed driving conditions. But the Mini Convertible isn't so much about speed or economy, it's the car's point and squirt handling that appeals. Turn-in is positive, more heft than expected from the electric power steering, and there is no body roll to speak of. The damping adds some welcome refinement, but without blunting the Mini's appetite for twists and turns. Yes, it still feels like a supersized go-kart, and that's a good thing. If there's one common denominator shared by all Minis, it's driving fun, and this convertible is no different. Let's face it, nobody buys a Mini, and especially not a ragtop Mini, for pragmatic considerations. However, if you're looking for a combination of character and brio linked to an ability to let the sun shine in, this car should be on your shortlist. A gruff but peppy three-cylinder engine delivers ample urge, while the auto gearbox adds to the drop-top's easy-going nature. That canvas hood is raised and lowered at the push of a button, and the quirky interior is nicely screwed together. However, top-down driving is a blustery affair, rear accommodation is cramped, and extras are expensive.